Okay, and here we go. Next up on the build table, the massive, the huge AMT Auto Car dump truck in 125th scale. So, let's dive in and take a look. Wow, now that's a pile of plastic. <laughs> uh, you get a lot of stuff with this kit. It is over 250 parts, I believe. Uh, you know, what makes it seem like such a big pile is the 25th scale. Now, if you recall when I did the trumpeter hemp tractor, this was just over 300, but in 135th scale. So moving up to the larger scale, as I said with the VW bus, of course, makes everything bigger. So more styrene. There we go. More, more plastic to work with. Now, uh, before we start digging through the pieces, one thing that, that uh, drew me to this kit was to be able to build a, a larger vehicle in that 25th scale so that it matches other cars or other kits that I've done in that 25th scale. So let's say our nice little VW Rabbit. And right here you can see against the frame rail, you know, you really get to appreciate uh, the size of this kind of vehicle in comparison to a car. So in terms of a learning and building experience with the kit, you, you really can appreciate the difference between, let's say, truck parts versus car parts. I mean, just in terms of like the, the batteries here, you know, and, and that's something without the truck being in the same scale, you really wouldn't have that experience with the building. So uh, just something to keep in mind. So we'll come back and look at this stuff in a minute, but to dig into the plastic, because there is a lot of it. Now, my, uh, without going through every single piece and talking about every little thing here, my initial impression when I unbagged the parts, which I just did a few minutes ago, uh, the molds are pretty clean. There is some flash that you see here and, you know, but it's, it's isolated. It's a spot here, a spot there. So no problem there. Uh, the only thing that will be a little bit of an issue, if you look at this in cross a view here, you can see there is uh, some warpage. Now with these frame rails, if you put them up to a line on the mat, we can see here we have a little bit of a bow in the vertical plane, the way it's sitting here, and a, looks like a little bit of a bow in the horizontal plane, again, the way it's sitting here. So the initial uh, extra attention that will need to be paid will be in making sure that things build square and true. Now, this obviously is a multi-part frame because we just have the frame rails here. There are quite a few cross members that will go in there. Uh, typically with things like this, they tend to true up as you build them. As I talked about with the uh, VW bus, when you have these, these larger assemblies, as long as you start with a good reference point, like a builder's mat or you know you could use a piece of graph paper you could take a blank piece of paper and draw a line with a ruler but as long as you start with one true reference line you can work out from there and your kit should build true uh, you know and let's say you finish building it uh, this kit is quite heavy so there's going to be uh, quite a bit sitting on this frame so unless you really have a, a big problem with the squaring of the frame, all your tires should sit, um, you know, touching the uh, table, the road, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, if, if you build a kit and, you know, you have one tire, whether it's a truck or anything, and, you know, one side is like a little bit off the, the, the ground, you know, unless you're going to enter a competition and people are going to be sitting there with, you know... Uh, sitting there with a straight edge and, and measuring things and, you know, all, the, all this kind of crazy nonsense. Uh, you know, you, you really don't have to worry about that. That's more something for the, you know, the diehard enthusiast, exacting perfectionist crowd. And, um, you know, it's more important just to have fun building it. So 
as usual, that's the lecture for today. So, <laughs> so there we go. So we have some really nice frame pieces. And I'm not going to go through every single part because this would be four hours long. We get a nice uh, protective grate for the grill. We have some good dashboard uh, detail. There are not decals for the dashboard, but it also comes with a full glass insert, clear part insert for the cab. So you really, unless you cut out a section for the driver, uh, you will not really have a good, sharp, clear view in. So not something to cause concern we have the big old fenders we have a uh, the sump guard for the uh, oil pan of the engine and now when we get into parts for the bed here uh, this is the framework that goes under the bed and again when you look at this sprue and cross uh, you can see this thing is woo you know hanging on a bit of a curve so that will take a little bit of extra attention as I said the pan of the bed you know when you look at that that that's not looking uh, too bad so that's good news because that should help uh, true up that frame and you know when you you glue big assemblies like that together especially like a framing and a sheet it actually makes your life kind of easy because if you have a nice level surface you can glue those together, set them down, put something heavy on top of it to squash it flat and let the glue set. And as the glue sets, you know, it'll, it'll true itself out. Um, for an assembly like that, you know, this stuff is really great. It is not an instant glue as opposed to, you know, a super glue, but it does bond relatively fast although you do get some working time so once you get that sided on there this will be good because you'll know it's in the spot it needs to be and it won't shift as you set it down and put the weight on top so you know you'll, you'll really just have to be worrying about getting the weight and getting it flat as opposed to putting it down and then you you know you take the weight off a couple of hours on preferably the next day later and find out you know the frame was crooked so that would not be a good day. <laughs> we have our bed sides. Now you'll see here all the ribbing that will all have to be assembled. And speaking of which, there we go. Side ribbing. It's really nice that they did this this way because if you want to do the truck in multiple colors, now in the box art, they, they show the standard uh, grayish metallic tone for the entire bed. But I've seen, uh, and you've probably seen them too, you know, sometimes these trucks are a little bit of, you know, like show presentation where you'll have the bed one color, the ribbing another color, which I think is uh, what I might want to do with this one. And, uh, you know, that, that, that can really add some visual uh, pop to it. So moving on, here we have our, our big transfer uh, differential cases, uh, some of the hardware Look at that drive shaft. You see that? That's nice. That's some nice molding. The leaf springs. Good stuff. Good stuff. We have some more parts here. Now there will be a few spares in this kit, which I just happened to, to pick out looking through, uh, particularly with the clear parts, which we'll get to. Uh, I believe, like with a lot of AMT kits, this has probably been uh, repurposed for, for different versions, different variants, and uh, that's why you would have some different parts in there, but all looking good. We have some nice firewall detail. Bring that out with a little black marker. You'll get those wires in there. We have our truck wheels. Again, multi-piece, which is good because if you want to do contrasting colors, let's say do the inset of the wheel one color, to match the uh, truck body and in these and let's say uh, a semi-gloss black you know it's all separate makes the painting a lot easier so we have and I love this a whole half a sprue just for engine parts so this giant diesel engine uh, you know this this should build up really nice uh, taking a quick look at the instructions you know all the little pumps and gizmos and gadgets and whatever you want to you want to go through the individual uh, 
names of the components they they all seem to be there so should build up well and again you know as i was saying uh you know in terms of doing the same scale as a car you know here's our vw rabbit next to that uh, diesel engine so you know building something like this again you, you can appreciate the uh scale and scope of a vehicle of this nature in its its real life manifestation so we have a one-piece cab that's nice the door detail with the hinges that's pretty good we have a nice seam line for the door so some uh good old panel liner drop that in there that'll make that that door really stand out as a separate piece uh, we have the little vent insert. Now you'll notice there is a notch here. This will actually need to be removed in the instructions. So, um, you know, I, I unpacked the, the parts. I looked at the instructions. And now, taking a closer look, I'm happy that line is there because I saw the note in the instructions and I thought, hmm, if they give a line, that'll make that very easy. If not, I have to do a little uh, measuring and, and estimating. But there it is. So, Good news on that. Interior, classic AMT, just a simple tub. You know, it is a dump truck. It's not a luxury car. So there's not a whole lot going on in there. But they did mold in some detail for window cranks and door pull. Uh, again, there's going to be a full clear parts canopy that goes up into the cab. So unless you want to, you know, venture and cut out the uh, driver's window, you will not see in there. So, well, you'll see in there, but it, it won't be so super clear. Although these parts, these clears, you know, when you look through there, they're not really uh, distorted. You get a nice, nice view in there, which is pretty good. So we'll have to see how that goes. This part is uh, really nice. We get a sprue of amber and a sprue of red clear for all the many, many lights that these things have on them. And that's good. It looks like there should even be some extras when it's done. Excellent stuff to hang on to for uh, future builds. We have two sprues, duplicates of clear. And from what I'm seeing in the instructions, I think we're only going to use a few of these for the headlights and whatnot. So again, have lots of leftovers. That's good. We have some chrome. Nice, shiny chrome there. Uh, again, if you're going to do, depending on how you decide to do the kit, if you're going to do more of a working truck, it'll probably be uh, better to hit all this with a dull coat and, and dull it down a bit. Uh, if you're going to do more of a show type truck which is you know all, all prettied up and clean uh probably leave it in the chrome like the side steps here uh and i i think the more i'm looking at this i, I think i'm leaning in that direction so you know I, I don't like to build my kits uh dirty i like to i'm not into all the rusting and weathering and all that stuff uh that doesn't appeal to me so i think some of this I will dull down and, you know, some of these components look like they go more towards uh, engine hardware, like these tanks here. Uh, but this grill, side steps, exhaust stack, you know, this is, this is a real nice molding here. It has all the texture as if that was in fact perforated to help vent heat and you know hit that with the panel liner black wash and um, that should look really nice a whole bag a whole bag of tires look at all of that pretty neat and the tires uh as usual with these these amt kits of of late really nice tires all the sidewall printing uniroyals nice tread pattern no center seam. Look at that. That's that's really nice. So, uh, good stuff there. And because it is a dual axle, uh, you know, dual tires on each uh, rear corner of the axle, you get uh, four, you know, you got like 
it's 12 times, you know, 3, 6, 7, 8, five, yeah, you get, you get a set of 12, uh, and they're all the same, which is nice, you know, it's not like they, they skimped on the uh, inner tires, so you won't have to worry about trying to match which tire goes where either, which is good. Now we have three metal shafts, two for the rear wheels, one for the bed, so the bed can lift, and we get some of this tubing here for the hydraulic lines. So I have to see how that works out. That should be good. We have a really nice decal sheet here. Pull these guys out. And you may have noticed on the uh, box art there was a little bit of pinstriping. They give you pinstriping in two different treatments like that. So depending on what kind of color scheme you want to do, it's ready to go. Uh, you get some you know, hazard markers, stay back 500 feet, selection of license plates, auto car emblems, and uh, this is this universal construction. I, I think this is AMT's own you know, construction uh, company brand because I believe they, they include these logos on almost every uh, you know, construction or work vehicle kit they do. So if you're into building these kinds of things, uh, you know, if you stick with those, you could have what looks like a little fleet of company vehicles, but there you go. But we also have uh, big asphalt, county road commission, the thunder sand and gravel. I, I kind of like these. Those, those look pretty nice. I think those would work well with some of the pinstriping as well. So I have a feeling that's going to go on my truck. We shall see. We shall see. All right, so now that we've looked at all the other stuff in the box, let's get back and look at these instructions. Now, you know AMT prefers these fold-out instructions. Uh, if you like fold-outs, you'll get a lot of folding with this one. <laughs> now, if you have purchased this kit as your first build, I strongly suggest you put it back in the box <laughs> and build uh, a few other kits first to get them under your belt. And the reason I say that is while there's nothing uh, inherently wrong with these instructions, they do require a little uh, familiarity with uh, building kits for you to navigate this and, and have a successful rather than a very frustrating build. And there's a number of reasons that contribute to that, which I will now go through. All right, first thing, uh, as is typical with AMT instructions, these numbers are not part numbers. They denote assembly order. Okay, straightforward. The only problem is in a kit with 250 plus parts or so, it would be nice for these parts to actually be labeled so that they would be easier to find. Now, you know, um, Ryfield, Trumpeter, when I went through those kits, Bandai, when I, I went through a Gundam model, you know, the, the kit organization is really excellent. You have numbered sprues with part numbers. So when you look for part A5, you know, right way to go. You have pictures of sprue maps, which... You know, I don't use them often, but I do appreciate them being there because if you're going crazy looking for a part, they can be of assistance. Uh, here you do not have sprue maps. You do not have part numbering. So when you look to locate a part, let's say this breather, you will have to search out on the sprue for what looks like the breather. Now, uh, while that sounds like not being a whole lot of fun, on the other hand, to, to make life a little bit easier, going back to a sprue, now we have our engine sprue and probably the vast majority, if not all of these parts, will be here. So at least you're working with this area. Now, how well that holds out through the rest of the kit, I guess I'll find out as I go along. So, you know, that, that that's something certainly to be aware of. Now... On the positive side, something I really like with this, especially from uh, if you're looking at building your kits as a learning experience, all the pieces are described as to their real-world uh, counterparts. So we have an alternator belt, 
this little piece, the breather. Okay, we have a water manifold. We have the transmission, exhaust manifold, dipstick, starter, rocker arm covers. You know, so even if you're not quite sure, let's say, what a breather does on a big diesel engine, at least you could go and do your research. You know, go type into a, a search engine, what is a breather on a diesel engine, and you can learn something. You know, if this just said part A15, you might go, all right, well, whatever A15 is, I'm sticking it in that hole, and that's the end of that. So in that case, you know, you would appreciate the detail of the kit, but maybe you wouldn't be able to look at it as sort of a learning, a more directed learning experience. So that's that. I know I said there would only be one lecture today, but there's lecture number two. <laughs> now, when you open uh, this sheet up, you will see it gets quite big. So for people who read in New York Times, I guess this <laughs> will be a rather comfortable thing to deal with because you will fold and counterfold because obviously it's kind of hard to build when you have this whole big sheet laid out. But, you know, you can fold it so that you're just looking at one step at a time. Uh, no big deal. But where uh, your experience will come in, when you look at a step such as this, the springs and rear axle, you know, we have this angular spaghetti of arrows denoting what is going where, and you do have to study this. And if you are not comfortable with assembly models, uh, as in, like, this is the first one you try to build, this could be um, challenging, uh, if not maddening. <laughs> you know, and as this continues, you know, these diagrams only get more... Uh, complex. My my favorite here in terms of the arrow spaghetti, when I was looking at it, is this step 10 here, final assembly for the cab. And, you know, you have 40 things to attach in this one exploded diagram with parts and arrows and things pointing all over the place. So, while the numbers will guide you along, you know, you, you, you really got to be careful and pay attention to what you're doing. So uh, that is the advisory on the instructions. So certainly keep that in mind. If this is a, a kit you're interested in building, and it, it certainly looks to be a, a you know, really a good kit to build, um, you know, understand that th this is something uh, you work towards, <laughs> you know, uh, rather than, than starting uh, from scratch and, and jumping right in. So, I will fold this back up. There we go. And there we go. And there we go. And if you fold it a little bit differently, maybe you can make a boat out of it. <laughs> no, so, um, there we go. That's that. Now, in terms of my approach with this kit, uh, you may remember, and I, I keep mentioning the uh, Trumpeter Hemp truck only because even though it's 135th scale and a completely different subject matter, the parts count is quite similar. Now, for this one, if you watched that uh, episode, you'll remember I painted all the sprues right off. I'm not going to do that this time because with this, obviously... We were dealing with one color because it's a military vehicle. With the dump truck, I'm going to be dealing with uh, several different colors. Uh, I'm going to take another look at the sprues and see how the parts separation looks to see, you know, where different components are. Maybe I'll spray them on sprue. I might assemble and then either, you know, can spray or perhaps even uh, break out my airbrush and airbrush in. So that remains to be seen. And I mention that because uh, how you approach a kit like this will have a lot to do with uh, how smooth your assembly goes and, you know, how much you enjoy it. Um, you know, uh, some people, when they do these videos, they, they just say, well, this is the way you go. And, you know, they, they, they press through. And, uh, you know, part of my approach with this channel is to try to show you one way but to at least discuss you know options for other ways so uh 
a whole lot of words. I don't know if, if that was really of, <laughs> of value. But in any event, i uh, going to get started with this. And when I come back, there should be some JPEGs and maybe we'll get a little assembly going. Okay, so we'll put this guy away because he is not the subject of this bill. This big giant dump truck is. So uh, going to get cracking. And until the next episode, I will see you, or next segment, I will see you then. All right.
right, and here we go with some building. Yes, no color, but building. And I figured I would stop here and jump in to talk about how the assembly is going. Now, in the JPEGs where I was showing some of the assembly and whatnot, I talked about uh, or pointed out two things that seem to be recurrent issues on this build. One, uh, warpage with a capital W. <laughs> and two, uh, flash and uh, parting uh, line cleanup. So uh, let's start with the easier of the two, which is the cleanup. Now with, with every kit, you will always have things to clean up as you remove your parts from your sprues and you notice maybe a little bit of flash here and there or some parting line that you need to clean up that that's just part of it um no pun intended <laughs> but uh not something that i normally expect to do on just about every single piece i take off the sprues so you know, not that it's an impossible thing to overcome, obviously, but it's just, you know, I want to build, I want to move forward, I want to do my painting, and every piece is, you know, it's it's a, a, a whittling work to, to get it cleaned up. And, uh, you know, that's why I, in a couple of the JPEGs I, I had, you know, the, the, the little snow shower of stuff to clean up. Now... Not to go, oh, this guy is better than this guy, but, uh, you know, when, when I've worked with um, some Ravel kits, certainly when I worked with the uh, Ryefield Panther, the Trumpeter Hemp Tractor, you know, there was very little parts cleanup. Uh, this is a little bit of an older tooling. Those are very modern kits, so, you know, in a way, that's not really a, a truly fair comparison. But at the same time, you know, if... Um, Obviously, this is not a first kit for someone. I would strongly recommend you you have a couple of builds under your belt. But, um, you know, there, there is like a whole extra level of patience and effort that you have to put in to really start getting it to look nice. Now, uh, some of these things you could say, well, I don't care about the flash or the parting seam. You know, who's going to notice? Oh, okay. You know, that that's basically true. However... However, capital H, um, you're going to run into places where if you do not remove that parting seam and you do not clean up the flash, the parts won't fit together. And or instead of a flush fit, you're going to have this, you know, uneven fit where do I fit it this way or do I fit it that way? Because you don't have a flush surface on the piece. You have this, you know, angle from the parting line and... Now you have to decide if you don't do the cleanup. Also, you know, this is not as strong as the bond as this because you've only got half the material touching. So, you know, certainly things to consider. Now, uh, the first item, going a little backwards, but hey, uh, <laughs> is the warpage. Now, the warpage is, is a little bit more of a serious thing. Uh, because, you know, you have to work the pieces to get them to try to align properly. Otherwise, uh, everything's going to be crooked and the truck's going to be going five different directions. And, you know, warpage has a way to build on itself. So it may not be a big deal to start with, but you add some pieces on top and you add some more pieces. And pretty soon you get to the point where nothing fits. Everything is horrendously crooked. And your vehicle looks like, uh, you know, it ran into a brick wall and someone tried to, you know, straighten it out and didn't do a very good job. So uh, if you want your kit to line up, you really have to put that attention into getting the uh, pieces to line up and align properly. Now, I had mentioned, you know, a grid mat, even a piece of paper with a line drawn on it. You need something to sight against. And even... With all the clamping and everything else, I do have, if you can see a little bit, I still have a teeny bit of wiggle in my frame, which means, you know, horizontally, this corner has a little lift. 
and it's probably only about two millimeters. Now, that's with all the clamping and aligning and everything I did. So, did I do a perfect job? Obviously not. But uh, it goes to show you that even when you put your best effort in, it may take a little bit more effort. Now, there are a number of ways to correct for this, and I mentioned getting medieval with it. And there you go, medieval. And uh, look at that. No more tip. So <laughs> it's not elegant. Uh, it's not fancy. It's not hobby, but, uh, you know, it got the job done. So, uh, sometimes, you know, you gotta, uh, bring a little hand pressure to bear. Now the dump body as well, uh, these pieces, especially this back plate were, uh, really bad in terms of the warping and this back plate, I was kind of concerned as to what exactly I would do with that. But I figured, uh, let me try just putting my hands to work and a little bend this way, a bend that way. You know, it is plastic. It has give. Uh, you just have to be aware that you can bend it and it may look like it's straight. But the plastic has some uh, shape memory and it'll go back a little bit to where it was. So you'll have to bend it again and, you know, make sure uh, a flat surface is good for that because you put it down and you'll see from the shadows around it, whether there's a lift on a corner or not. But <clears throat> with all the clamping done, uh, look at that. We got a dump body and it's pretty level. This only has a little wiggle in it. Maybe a millimeter. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that at all. But you may have noticed in the JPEGs that I said I clamped the sides on because I didn't want to glue them. I want them loose because I'm going to do a two-tone and it's much easier to paint this one color and then put it on than to put it on and try to paint this and mask underneath and everything else. So, which brings up the matter of painting because I did the side on my colors. So I'm going to go with two greens to offset. A lighter green and a darker green. These are Rust-Oleum uh, Green Apple and a Dark Hunter Green. So um, they should go pretty well together. We'll see. Uh, if it looks like crap, well, I guess the truck will end up being a different color. <laughs> but so far, so good. Now, to give you an idea of how this is going to build up the... Dump body will go on roughly like so, and the cab will sit roughly like so. And uh, that gives you a little bit of an idea of how we're going to go and in comparison to a 24th scale car. So again, you know, like I, I said in the beginning, it, it's nice to build in similar scale so when you build you know a truck it's nice to appreciate the truck in comparison to a car obviously we all know trucks are big but you know we don't always get to see under the hood and the suspension and everything else with when you build the kit you do and having built a car you can then appreciate the difference between the two and uh, just how awesome these big rigs are so a good thing to keep in mind and enjoy. Now, obviously, I've been building out of order. Uh, the only thing I've done where I really didn't stick with the instructions, they have for the front wheels these little pins. Let me bring this up. These little pins here that will mount the front wheels. Those pins sit in these cups. And the pin is supposed to rotate in that cup so that the wheel can turn. However, I glued the pins in place. The reason I did that, the fit of the pin in the cup was very sloppy. So once it was together, the pin angled up. Now you may think, ah, oh, what's the big deal? But when it's a big old front tire on there and that pin is loose, 
it's going to look ridiculous. We're going to have clown tires on the front because they're going to be uh, camber, I believe it is, cambered in so sharply towards the top that, um, you know, it, it's just going to look silly. So I glued them in level so when the wheels go on, it will be a nice perpendicular between the cup and the wheel and it will sit straight the way it should. Now, those issues aside, as far as the build goes, you know, obviously the warpage and, you know, watching for the parting lines, but the pieces go together well. There are large uh, holes and marking lines to, to fit everything, as you can see here, and uh, the, the pieces basically fit together well. Uh, you'll, you may be able to notice on camera here, uh, I, was, I was a little generous with the glue. Uh, because I didn't have to worry about the paint. So that's why I, I did this one this way because I knew from just from the warpage of the parts that there was going to be a lot of work with this. And what was the point of painting if I was just going to be scraping and, you know, marring the finish? Might as well build it, get it straight, get it right, paint it, and be done. So <clears throat> that's the plan. Now I'm going to move to painting at this point because I have my frame all set. I have my various uh, tanks, air tanks, fuel tanks, what have you. Uh, I have the halves together, puttied, sanded, so they're all smooth and ready to go. Dump body is ready to go. Uh, there's nothing to do with the cab. I just brought it out to, to show uh, a rough mock-up. Uh, all the other parts are still on the sprues. I'm going to prime them on the sprues and probably do their final paint as I assemble them and uh, get them onto the kit. So, that's where we're at. The instructions for all the spaghetti lines and everything else, you know, sometimes these AMT instructions can be uh, vague with a capital V <laughs> when it comes to mounting stuff, but uh, not with this kit. So far, I haven't had any problems. Uh, because there are no part numbers in the instructions, it does take a little bit of extra attention rounding up the parts. But as I noted uh, in the JPEGs, uh, fortunately, the parts are grouped by assembly. So, you know, the rear bogey, almost all those pieces were in one area. Same with the front. Uh, there were a few odds and ends pieces I, I kind of had to hunt down, but, you know, it, it's not that big of a deal. And studying the instructions, you'll notice on the sprues basically what is where, and you realize, oh, you know, I'm in engine part, so, you know, move along. Um, so it's all looking pretty good. Going to prime, going to paint, going to get moving on that. And, uh, hey, we got ourselves a dump truck coming along. So, uh, next time, color, and uh, moving on from there. One last word, uh, I've done almost everything with, well, everything so far with my good old tester cement. Uh, love this stuff. You know, it, it it bonds quite fast, but not instant. So you do get a little work time, but with the uh, raw plastic, you know, it tacks up within seconds. So you have a little bit of play, but you can still have it secure. It's not just going to fall apart in your hands. Uh, that was particularly helpful on this steering linkage, which has quite a few parts going on, nicely detailed. But overall, uh, you know, the detail is really nice on here. This uh, chassis is a very nice assembly, so looking good. All right, I am going to get to the paint, as I said, and that's all for now. Until the next segment. Yeah, alrighty. Okay, so here we are with some color. Now, I thought I would come in here and talk a little bit about painting strategy, since that's always a concern. And since I just finished spraying everything uh, over the course of a couple of days, because I did uh, two different primes, black and some gray. The gray is now all covered up. And then my finished colors, the two different greens and some of the silver for the truck bed. Now, 
you'll see here I am going with a two-tone green. So, you know, when it's assembled, these greens will go together like so. And we'll see how that looks. I'm thinking it's going to look okay. Um, I have to admit, I'm not 100% on it, but that's part of the point of this segment is sometimes, you know, when you, you, you do your paint, you pick your colors, you do your paint scheme, uh, it may not look 100% what you had intended, but sometimes you uh, have to take a little bit of a leap of faith that it will look good once it's done. Um, and that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, the colors matched when I, I you know, they complemented each other okay when I had the, you know, did some uh, spray samples on my uh, cardboard upstairs. So um, I'm going to assume they look good once it's all done. <laughs> now you'll notice, uh, getting back to the idea of painting strategy, uh, the engine parts are still in black primer. I'm going to build the engine and then I will airbrush with uh, some of this Tamiya flat yellow. I don't believe that flat yellow is the uh, correct, you know, technically correct color, but I'm thinking it will blend well with everything else. And really, you know, I, I've said in, in prior build videos, I'm not so concerned 100% about color accuracy. I just like to build so that it, it complements itself well once it's done. And uh, part of my thinking with this was, Obviously, using a two-tone color scheme, it's not a stock color scheme. So, you know, whatever with, with this truck. So, um, it is the way it is, and and, and there it is. <laughs> now, when I approach this, some of this is straightforward. So, like the wheel pieces, they were primed, they were sprayed their finished color, and that was that. They were done. Uh, you know, I just wrapped the ends that I didn't want one color with some uh, some saran wrap, clear plastic wrap, whatever you want to call it, and, and that was that. Uh, the chassis did take a couple of rounds of spraying because of all the different nooks and crannies and angles and whatnot, but, you know, done up in just a simple black primer, that's looking pretty good, so I am happy with that. And, uh, you know, all those little extra paint, uh, sorry, uh, glue splotches that were there because I went a little liberal with the glue. You can't even see them anymore. So there you go. So that's all set. The body, and this is where the point of this video kind of comes in, I should, the cab, I should say. You'll notice from the inside, there was some primer gray originally. Then I did the dark green. Then I masked off and did the light green for the doors. And as I'm talking about this, I realized I forgot to do the light green over here to carry into the side panels of the hood. So this will go back into the paint booth. There we go. Now, the bigger thing you can do, because it's often easy to think that, you know, if, if you're going to use sprays that, you know, you're limited to maybe one or two colors because of masking, masking. Now, the bed assembly here is a number of different colors. In fact, we have one, two, three, and four. And, um, you know, this was just a matter of doing it one step at a time. So I started with the black primer, which is just the same flat black. Did everything with that. Then I did the silver for the interior of the bed. This is very bright right now. I am going to hit this with a dull coat later to take that down a few notches. Once that was done, then I masked off the inside of the bed and did the light green on the sides. Then I added to mask off the light green and I did the dark green here. And then once the light green was dried, I masked off this line and did the dark green up top. So that once this is together, we have the dark green on the inside of those places where the top timber will rest for the bed. So, you know, it looks like a complicated thing to have done. It really isn't. 
with spray painting, you do have a lot of things you can do, but you just have to remember to, to plan ahead. Think about what you're going to have to mask. Think about which colors are going over others. I found in my little test spray on my cardboard that this light green covered up the dark green, no problem. So I didn't even mask the, the door when I painted the cab the dark green. But had I discovered that this lighter green did not cover the, the dark green well, then I would have masked the door off when I painted the dark green. So it's, it's things like this. It takes a little experimentation. It's better to experiment a little bit first and then paint after then paint first and realize I've got a problem. <laughs> Don't want to have problems. So at this point, I am going to resume building. And, uh, you know, the, the painting that's left to do, obviously these are not all the parts of the kit. I still have quite a bit in here. Uh, those were things that I wasn't quite sure what approach I wanted to take as far as, you know, sub-assemblies and painting or painting and then sub-assembling, but, you know, I'll see how that goes. So, back to building. Alrighty. Okay, now you might be thinking, rip off, I was looking for JPEGs. Well, maybe you were, maybe you weren't, but... <laughs> uh, change of plans. Now, uh, I was going to do this build in just one video, but seeing where I'm at and other things that need to be discussed and the uh, amount of detail I would like to show in the build uh, and a few plans that I've developed along the way for this build, uh, this video is going to be way too long. So, instead of going to build, I will snip it here so this will be the end of part one and in part two i will talk more about building and finishing uh this little monster off so thanks for watching and i hope you stick around for part two of this build and as usual uh if you joined the video or you found it of use or think someone else might Please uh, like, share, subscribe, all, all that YouTube stuff, I always say. All that crazy YouTube stuff. So, enjoy your hobby, and I'll be back.